you got to have it. So you either have initiative or you don't, you know, you're either a self-starter or you're not. So I was just born that way. I had initiative. I was a self-starter. And then of course it didn't hurt that I had a dad that if I wanted something, he said, you want it, you go earn money and pay for it. You know, I'm not, you know, cause we didn't have a lot of money. So part necessity, part teaching me lessons. So, you know, I was very fortunate to earn, to learn at a very young age. And I'm talking, you know, seven, eight years old, that if I wanted something, I had to go create the money to get it. So I learned how to create money out of nothing. Now, you know, that was a very basic level where it was just me, you know, trading my time for dollars, but that was scalable because when I had a lot of work, I would hire my friends and they would come with me to rake yards or whatever. And I'd get 20 bucks and I'd pay them five, <laughs> you know, and we could do twice as many yards. So I learned at a very young age how to leverage. I learned the cost of doing business because I had to pay my dad for renting his equipment. You know, I had to pay for the gas and the oil and maintenance of the lawnmower. I had to pay him a percentage of all of my profits for using his equipment until I could buy my own and then I didn't have to pay. And that's what he taught me. You know, hey, you use my equipment, you pay for it. You, want, you, you don't want to pay me, go buy your own, you know? And see that, you know, and that was in the day that if you wanted something, you had to go earn it. You know, so a lot of young people today, um, you know, in this world, and even when I was coming up, you know, didn't have to earn anything. It was all given to them. So, you know, the question is, are you born with the initiative or is it built into you? You know, that, that I don't know the answer to that. And I'm sure there's been studies uh, and there's, there's probably a lot of science behind it, but, and you can tell when somebody has initiative, when they're diligent, when they have a sense of urgency and when they don't. And whenever I've hired in any of my organizations, the first thing I list, you must be a self-starter, have a strong sense of urgency. You know, because the last thing I want is somebody coming to me, asking me a question they could have easily found the answer to. I don't need that individual. That's a waste of my time. With Google today and the stuff that's out there, you can get the answer to almost any question in these forums and all, all over the place where people will ask questions that they can easily find the answer to. And it's like, you know, you just, just hit Google. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, you can list the pros. Like, so decision-making process. And this goes back to Benjamin Franklin, right? So, you know, the old list of, you know, put down the pros, put down the cons. And if the pros outweigh the cons, go. So at that point, you just, you just either go or you don't. So for a lot of people, you know, they're, they're afraid to make a decision because they're afraid of the potential outcome if they fail. So what I would say is when you're listing your pros and cons, don't forget to list, well, what's the worst thing that could happen if and when you do fail? Because you will. Ultimately, it's something somewhere along the line. You're going to make a bad decision. We make them every day. You're going to fail. We do every day. So at the end of the day, when you look at a business, number one, you got to be able to calculate the risk. That's where a lot of people miss. They'll put pros, they'll put cons, but they don't accurately calculate the downside and then make sure that they can withstand whatever that is. So if it's humiliation, if it's dollars, loss, whatever that is, make sure that you can survive the downside if and when that thing does go wrong. And if you can, then go. So that's making a good calculated decision. Now, uh, a lot of my entrepreneurial decisions, you know, I didn't even go that detail. You know, when I started my first company, I just wanted to do my own thing. And I just, you know, it started with one little deck job and then a little bit of trim and then this and that. And I started running ads and I started hiring people. So, you know, I had a little business plan and I was running my numbers and my break even. I knew I, I had to bring in so many sales, but, you know, I didn't look at the downside, you know, and for me, worst case scenario was, well, if it didn't work, you just go back, you just go back and get a job. So for a lot of people out there, especially educated people that can get great jobs with six figure salaries, your worst case scenario is it doesn't work and you just get a job and then, you know, you, you restart again another day 